Hi, so I've been working on the Swag Inc based on some other work that I've been doing. And lots of people have mentioned to me, and lots of people are saying, hey, why don't you try the snow magnetic field? So I tried something else in a magnetic field, and it seemed to make an improvement. And I thought, hang on, I've got a pot of this stuff lying around, which is the Swag Inc. I haven't done anything on it for a bit. Let's give that a go and see what happens when we put it in a magnetic field. Now, what we've got here is a printer's block. It's meant for laying up type. It's actually a whole load of little magnets in that direction. So the magnetic field runs like that, north to south. So overall, the field is in that direction. And what I did was put a bit of plastic on it, take some of the swag ink, and just drop the swag ink on. Now, something really astounding happens almost immediately. If I spread that ink out, then what it does is form lines in line with the field. And I'll give you a close-up of that. And there you go, that's what I mean. That should be just a neat ink covering, but you can see quite clearly there are the lines of the field from that magnet being reproduced in the ink. Now that's really weird. And as a comparison, here it is without the magnetic field being exactly what you'd expect it to be. It's just an amorphous mass. And if we put that magnetic field back in there, it forms the lines again. Now how cool is that? If I leave that to dry now in that magnetic field, then those field lines will actually remain. And that one is dry. It's actually looked damp because I've been putting it in salt water. But it's actually dried and you can see that the magnetic field lines that we had before have stayed in the ink. Now I intend on using um, copper and aluminium collection electrodes so that we get a one-way flow of this stuff. But there are going to be three cases that we're actually interested in. The first case where we have the field lines running in between the electrodes. So we effectively have electrode here, electrode there, and we'd arrange it so the field lines run that way. The next one would be that we'd have the field lines running parallel. So we'd have an electrode here, electrode here, and the field lines running that way. And the next one would be where we don't have anything at all that we can use as a control. And that's what these three samples are. There's our electrodes, and that's nothing has been done to that. It's just been painted on and left. And that would be our control. Here we have our electrodes at the top, and the field lines, in this case, are running between the electrodes. And the final one is where we have the electrodes there, and the field lines are running parallel. It's going to be a slight variety because, of course, we've got the electrodes at the top and bottom and not here. So I really, for absolute accuracy, I should have done the electrodes there and the field lines that way. But I didn't, and we'll just have to assume that that little bit of error is insignificant. So, what I've got here is just 600 millilitres of water with a teaspoon of sugar in it. I'm sorry, a teaspoon of salt in it. What I'm going to do is connect it up to my meter, which is reading... Um, microamps, incidentally. So I'll connect it up to my meter and we'll dip it in and out and see what kind of ampage readings we get. So here is effectively what was the original swag experiment and we're going to connect that up and dip it in and out of our salt water. Now in order to get a reasonable reading out of the original swag experiment what we actually had to do was use uh, quite a high concentration of uh, aluminium chloride as its salt and we put this on microamps so that we could get a reading from it. It is currently on milliamps, a thousand times more. And um, all we've got here is a small amount of sodium chloride. So let's have a look, see what reading we get when we dip it in and out. Now, effectively, nothing. We will be getting a reading on that, but the reading is um, so small, we'd have to change the meter reading for it. Now what I want to do is have a look at the one that is... Um, parallel to the current collector electrodes. So we connect those up. And dip it in and out of my salt solution. See that? We're now actually getting a reading from it. I mean, we're not getting much. We're getting 0.4 milliamps. Now we can try it where this time we've actually got them running between the current collecting electrodes. OK, 
Qué la... Obviously it depends on speed. <laughs> so, and uh, it, the meter is now actually on the voltage reading. So that's reading in volts. And now you can see what kind of voltage you're getting out of it. You get about 0 0.35, 0 0.38, somewhere around about there. So that's the voltage reading and the amperage reading for that particular setup. That one, where we let it dry in the magnetic field, so the field lines were between the two, we're getting a huge increase in output. I mean, we can read it at the uh, milliamp level. We're getting about six, eight milliamps out of that. And the area, you can see the area, it's that wet bit there. So the area that we use, uh, we're getting that reading out of is, uh, what would that be? It's about five centimetres square, it's about 25 square centimetres. So we're getting eight milliamps at 25 square centimetres because we pulled it in a magnetic field first. I think that's pretty impressive. That's a huge order of magnitude improvement, actually three orders of magnitude improvement in the performance of the swag generator by applying the swag ink and pulling it in a magnetic field first. Now, that, I think, is quite an advancement, so I thought I would share it with you, and if you enjoyed it, thank you very much for watching.